I'm Michelle from Crafters Countdown, and today we are going to be working on the August rocks. Now, um, August doesn't have any official holidays, and so Crafters Countdown uses this to count down the days of summer. And speaking of summer, I know that this video is coming out a little bit later than I had anticipated, and that's because of the fires that we've had in Northern California and Southern Oregon this summer. The first thing I'd like to do is give a great big shout out and thank you to the first responders who took care of everything and everyone and, and all of the people who donated to help those who've been displaced, but also to the rockers. You know, this is a, the Kindness Rock Project is what started this. And there were a lot of really great rock groups and rockers that sent out special rocks for the first responders, for the National Guard who responded to some of the people in need for fires. And then of course, for those who had lost their homes and were just needing to be picked up a little bit. Um, so good job rockers, thank you for being so kind. And I'm really proud to be part of this movement um, because kindness does matter, it's really awesome. So today, what I wanted to address was those imperfect rocks. I know that a lot of times we go down to the river and we're looking for that perfectly ovate or round, flat rock that is just perfect for painting on and we can do whatever we want on it and do whatever kind of applique and picture and everything smooth. But sometimes it's not so easy to find that perfect rock. So I wanted to show you some of the rocks that I have here um, these I thought would be really super fun for when Halloween comes around because they've sort of got warts on them. I thought they would make great ogres or witches or something. Um, but they're still nicely shaped rocks. A lot of times people will take these interesting shaped ones, and this one looks like it's got some great layers in it. I, I like the rocks by themselves before they're painted too. So this one would be great to paint just a picture or scene on the front of it there if you wanted to, or you could Look at it and see if it reminds you of something that you would like to turn into something else. A really popular thing to do with the nice round rocks that have a bit of a chip taken out of the side of them is turn them into a bitten M&M. And um, people do all kinds of different faces and different colors, and, and um, but they put that chocolate on the side. I've also seen some that are like half-eaten and ice creams. Have fun with this. I mean, that's part of the joy of it. Now, when I saw this rock, I immediately said, that looks like it's going to be a skeleton. And it's kind of weird, but it just reminded me of a skeleton head somehow. And so that's what I painted on there. Very simple rock, be great for um, Halloween in a couple months. Now, sometimes people see different things when they look at a rock. I know that different people had different ideas when we looked at this one. When I picked it up, I was like, oh, a Christmas tree, immediately. So we'll be sending this on to Jessica Kringle because she's going to be doing something special for us in December. Oftentimes, what we see in a rock can change. So when I saw this rock, I immediately said, oh my goodness, that's a foot. And I was going to paint some cute little toenails and some wonderful sandals on here for counting down the days of summer for August. But... Um, the more I painted on it, the more I realized that that's just a big hairy foot. That's not a cutesy sandaly foot. So I uh, ended up putting some hairs on there and made what I think looks like a really amazing foot. So that was a lot of fun to work on. When I found this one, I had an idea for it. And actually right now I can't even remember what that idea was because I was showing it to a male friend of mine who said, that looks like a milk bone. You know what I'm talking about? And I said, yeah, but no. And I said, nobody's going to want a milk bone. I mean, you know, if I leave this somewhere, nobody's going to want to pick up a, a rock that looks like a bone. And he said, well, I would and my son would. So it's not just about thinking outside of the box, but sometimes it's about thinking outside of our own boxes to really see those, uh, those shapes inside and, and what this could remind us of and what somebody else may appreciate. I sure had fun painting this, so um, that was a lot of fun. Now, I wanted to show you one of the workarounds for when you have a rock that is, you know, a good shape or size for you, but it's really, really pithy. And pithy means it's got all these little holes in it. If you work with the paint pens, then you know that these little holes or pith marks are a nightmare because Sometimes when the nib catches on there, it splatters paint everywhere on your work, and that's really frustrating. I, 
I've done that. So there's a way to make this rock a little bit smoother so that it's easier to paint on. And what you'll need to do that is simply some speckle. So back to the Home Depot, you think all of your crafty things are in the craft stores, but we, we do buy a lot of things at Home Depot to work on these rock projects and it's kind of fun. So to go along with this, of course, you need some kind of application knife. They have putty knives. This one's huge. Like this will be really great for evening this out and scraping it off. Not exactly great for application because it doesn't quite fit in the tub here. So that's why I've got a regular butter knife, and, you know, some disposable plastic knives. Any of those will work. You don't need all of them. Just pick what you need. Um, of course, uh, paper towels and rags for just in case you don't want to get it all over the place or, you know, you start getting it on your fingers. And then when you're done to make it smooth, because, and I'll show you, it doesn't go on completely perfectly smooth. Normally they recommend that you sand it. Now there are a lot of warnings on this warning label. This is got chemicals and that kind of thing in it. And when you let it dry and you sand it, you end up with some dust and the dust um, can be a breathing hazard. Most of us who've been around the fires know how bad that can be. So what I like to do, both when I'm repairing walls and when I'm working on my rocks, is to simply take one of these sponges that you can get at one of the dollar stores, and um, it's got kind of a rough side and then it's got its soft side. Get it a little bit wet and wring it out as best as you can. You want it just barely damp. And it is really great for smoothing out those parts on your rocks and your walls and your doors and whatever it is that you're needing to repair. And it doesn't have the dust factor that using sandpaper does. So, um, but you know, it's again a personal preference. If you're going to use the sandpaper, I would definitely work outside and definitely, definitely wear a dust mask as it recommends on the label of this. So let's go ahead and get started and make this rock ready for smooth painting. Okay, so this this has kind of been in the garage for a while. It's rather old. It says that it goes on pink, dries white. Um, it's not exactly pink anymore, and it's a little bit lumpy, but um, it's still perfectly good to use for this project. So I'm going to go ahead and use the butter knife, and you're just going to smear this on, and you're going to scrape it and work it in so that it works into the holes. Now, if you have um, sensitivity to chemicals, if you're worried about it, you certainly can use gloves. I've done a lot of home repair and actually worked for a home repair company for a while because I like working with my hands and um, sometimes I apply this with my fingers and so that's not recommended, but I've never had any harm come to me as a result of it, so, um, you know, it's just something that would be an option. Tip this up so you can see. So it's thick and it's putty-like, and you want, you know, a, a small coat over it. You don't want to go too thick over the rock because then it will take forever to dry and you'll waste a lot of it when you sand it or sponge it down to get the lumps off. So you want to do the best you can to apply an even coat without it getting too gloppy. You can apply this to the entire rock. Now this is not at all water resistant, so you will need to make sure that you, you know, put your Mod Podge on top of this and then put a nice finishing, either your spray or you know that I, for environmental reasons, use the brush on um, lacquer at the end. Kind of like frosting a cake, you're frosting a rock. Stuff's a little bit thick to use a um, spatula from the kitchen probably, but you know what? It would be worth trying a rubber spatula just to see how well that works. All right, so I've got this on in this layer, and the next thing I'm going to do is take this because it's got the broader surface, and I'm just going to go ahead and scrape this all the way around and get off the excess. You can see that it's forming on there. And when you put that back in the tub, it doesn't waste it, which is always a good thing. And you can see by the colors 
here that this rock has a bit of an indentation there. See where it's, you can't see as much of the rock through the back of it. That's because it has that indentation and the putty is filling in there. And so that's okay, we're going to leave that. What I'm going to do now is I need to set this aside. It needs to dry for about an hour and then I'll come back and show you how to sand it. Okay, so it's been just over an hour and this is now dry, you can feel it. And there are some larger chunks on there that sort of come off when you rub across with your finger and some of the dust. So again, I prefer to use this because it doesn't create as much dust as using sandpaper. So the first thing I'll do is just sort of use the scratchy side and scrub off some of the large, um, you know, globs and bumps and balls that were on here from putting it on. And you don't want to press very hard, but you know, you want to apply just a little bit of pressure so that it makes it smooth. And again, I got this very wet and then wrung it out as tightly as I could, gave it a couple of shakes to make sure that there weren't water puddles stuck in here. And then if you just very gently rub with the damp sponge, then you can also see that it smooths this out in the places where it's not smooth. Where the dip was, you can see that some of the spackle created a hole as it dipped in. So your choices are to keep rubbing that in until it's smooth, or you can apply a second coat of spackle just to um, make sure that you've got everything absolutely filled in. But there, and now, this, I'm gonna do a little bit more on the edges here. And as you can see, there are some pieces and some chunks on the uh, paper towel that I've got underneath here but it's not a huge amount of dust because, and you can't tell because it's white, but a lot of it's on here. Right, and this is ready to paint and it now feels like and seems like a very smooth, perfect rock. So you, if, if you spray your base coat, then you can do that. I apply my coats, uh, all of my coats with a brush because I don't use the aerosols. Now, because spackle is not water resistant, one of the things you'll want to be careful of is if you're going to use a brush and your acrylic paint rather than a spray, then you just want to be gentle with applying the brush strokes and, you know, don't do too many brush strokes back and forth because it will start to um, lift the spackle or it could end up putting brush strokes in the spackle. So. I usually just put a healthy amount on there and then very gently rub this in back and forth. Um, you know, light coats to begin with. Now, if you did have some spots that, um, you know, weren't perfectly smooth, then acrylic paint is a great way to fill in some of those little imperfections as well. I've got a coat of paint on here. I'll wait for this to dry and then I'm going to use this beautiful, perfectly shaped rock as a quilt rock. If you don't know what a quilt rock is, be sure and watch our November episode because I'm going to go to a quilt rock exchange and show you all about that and how you could start a quilt rock exchange in your part of town. Once you've got your base coat on there and it's dry, you can use whatever you normally do, whether it's the Poscas um, or other paint pens or just an acrylic paint. and um, Go from there. Go ahead and keep watching. I'm going to put a montage to give you some inspiration so that you can come up with some ideas when you see those imperfect and oddly shaped rocks, see what you can come up with. I would love to see what you've done so you can post your pictures to Crafters Countdown on Facebook. That would be a lot of fun. I hope you will remember to subscribe to this channel. We will be catching up in the next couple of weeks to get you all of the um, videos so that we can continue on and be ready in a timely manner now that we've got all of our fires put out here in Northern California. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope that you'll watch us soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.